Welcome to episode 24 of the brand website series where I'll reduce duplicated code in the modules. Make sure to subscribe because I have a lot more videos planned outside of the current video series. Thank you to everyone who already subscribed and contributed in any way. I'm really, really enjoying the community engagement. Now let's dive into the video starting with the problem I want to solve. As you can see on the screen, I've built all these modules, portable modules, so I could start a travel blog tomorrow if I wanted to and easily copy over the end-to-end -end standalone modules that I would need for that new project and plug them in. After the, doing the migrations, my travel blog now has a fully functioning blog with Markdown Editor and all of the other modules that I copied over. To keep these modules portable or standalone, I had to duplicate some code snippets into each module. And that's the problem we'll tackle today. So if I open a database project, I see this auditable entity tracking entity if i would open another module i'll likely see that auditable entity again with exactly the same properties and that will be the case for every module that has a database project so what i could do now to reduce duplication is make Another top level shared project, move all of the duplicated code in one place and then use that in each module. But then our modules become less portable, less standalone because now I have a dependency on another project within my solution which in turn makes it harder to then copy over all of the required functionality to my new travel blog project because now I not only would I have to copy over the blog module but everything it's depending on as well. But now that we do have that requirement of having portable modules, standalone modules, we'll need a portable solution, which is creating our own NuGet packages. I went ahead and created one NuGet package as an example that simply holds that auditable entity and the tracking entity. Let's see if I can implement it. So I'm going to go to the metrics module, the database project, which holds the auditable entity and the tracking entity. Let's now try to install my package. These other packages have nothing to do with me. Let's see. 1.0.4 and the other version is 1.0.0 because all the packages in between I unlisted because they contained some errors or something. Let's install that. And now I'll do something reckless and delete both of these entities. Let's see. If I can, yes, using packages.database. I hoped my name would have been in here, not just the solution name that I built. So I'll have to fix that. Let's see, tracking entity, and then the auditable entity should also be able to come from there. So I named this this is a class library and I named it packages.database and that is what you saw in the using statement before. Now that I saw that, maybe I should have given that a better name. This class library holds the auditable entity and the tracking entity. But the most important file of to make a NuGet package is this CS approach where everything is specified, starting with a package ID, 
so that's the package name you'll see in the NuGet package manager, the version, then some custom information about the author, generate package on build through which runs the .NET pack command which will actually create the, the package. And if I run that in the terminal, then you can see below successfully created package in the bin debug folder, starting with the package ID, the version, and then the extension. Package tags is for more discoverability on the NuGet package uh, website gallery. Package description speaks for itself, just a simple description to display in the NuGet gallery and on the NuGet package manager. The package license, I set that to MIT, just following an example. MIT is supposed to be a license that's not too restrictive in terms of usage. So it's not like a commercial license or, or whatever licenses are out there. Package icon URL, I uploaded my logo to yeah, my blob store, but actually the new, yeah, that's supposed to be a deprecated usage. The new usage would be package icon, which just has the name of my logo and the logo is actually inside of the database project. Release notes for every version, so every time you make changes, you'd likely want to upgrade the version. Yeah, uh, to number five. And then you can edit the release notes, what's new in this version. Package readme is also for that NuGet gallery and yeah, to write everything that is important for this package, so instructions and so on. Then the item group below contains that the logo and the readme. So it's just pointing inside of this database project so that these tags, the package icon and the package readme file are resolved. And then we need to publish that. To publish the package, first you'll want to build that package, so the newest version. And then they advise to go to that directory and run the command to actually publish it. But I'm just going to copy over this path and paste that in my terminal. I have already done this, so I'll just show you. So that would be with the .NET command line interface, the .NET CLI, NuGet, push, then the path where the build package lives, an API key, I will show you later. This API key is just a temporary one that is valid for one day because I configured it that way, so it's not not a security risk for sharing that. And then you likely have to also specify the source, which is something like api.nuget.org and so, some more. That could also be a custom source if your package has to be hosted somewhere else. If you run that, that should publish your package to the NuGet manager. So you'll need a account on NuGet.org and then you can go to API keys. And that's where I created a new key. So you can just create it. And then you can select expires in one day, 90 days and so on. So I picked one day for that temporary key the pattern, you can just set it to all. So that's where you'll get the key and normally there's a copy option. First time you generate the key, so then you just copy it over to the terminal. 
I could regenerate it's gonna give me a new key and then I get that copy option again and that's how you get the API key so why I left out that source is because I made a top level nuget config file where you can specify that package source nuget.org and then that's that api.nuget.org and that URL. It's quite bothersome to have to type that each time into the terminal so I moved it out to a global file in this solution and then it'll have to set the default push source as well to that one. And I added a readme file as usual official documentation of Microsoft that shows you how to create and publish using the .NET CLI. So that is how I created the NuGet package for the database. But if you're really serious about uh, developing NuGet packages and maintaining them, you'll likely want to do that in a CI/CD pipeline, so with Azure DevOps or with the GitHub Actions that can then package and publish that package for you and that it's also versioned on GitHub, of course. Another good thing to know is you can also build pre-release packages. So an alpha package or a beta package or an RC release candidate package, which simply indicates that it's still a work in progress, that it's not yet the final stable version. And instead of having all of your packages public on the NuGet gallery, you could create your own NuGet feed, your own source to publish your packages on. That could be a private server, something only you or your team can access, like a VPN. I'll definitely create more NuGet packages because not only do I share code between these modules, but last year I created a large project that contained a lot of string helpers, database helpers, and I often find myself going back to that project to copy over that simple code into my new projects. So it would be nice to just have that in the package and simply install it. So we've talked about the benefits of using NuGet packages, but there's also downsides to it, of course. And a downside would be that yeah, you have to maintain these packages and it takes a while to get feedback. So what I mean by that is you develop a package, you code it, then you have to package it and publish it. And then you have to upgrade the projects that depend on that package and validate if everything is still working correctly. If not, you will have to go back to your package project, uh, fix the code, write your tests, I mean, yeah, whatever is needed and do it all over again. Package it, build it, I mean, publish it and validate it again. So it's not the smoothest way of developing. Since these packages are simple class libraries, it would be entirely possible to just develop these within the same solution as the project that need the package that wants to implement the package the only risk there of course is that you might accidentally directly reference these packages and work with them instead of going over the nuget package manager and then you would lay a dependency on another project in your solution that's all for this video and this video series. I hope you're now comfortable with creating NuGet packages, but also with deciding whether your project needs NuGet packages or you simply want to work in a mono repo. If this video was valuable to you, hit that like button to let me know and do subscribe because I have planned many more videos outside of this video series. 
If you want access to all of the code that I built in this video series, all of the modules, all of the nice features, authorization, file upload payments, a fully functioning blog module with a markdown editor, live preview and file upload. You can find all of that on my Patreon by simply becoming a member or you could go to the shop and get your own copy. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching and I do have a limited time offer for you, which is the end-to-end -end payments module with Molly, the payment processor, which is similar as Stripe. If you want a copy, simply go to the kisco.com website, enter your email address and join the community and I'll make sure to send you the copy. I hope I see you in the next video.